there we are. Uh, good grief, you know, most people will see today as police beating up on occupiers, which is happening, but that's a small percentage of the people that are here. Right now we're on a sort of a break between one, this morning's action, and this afternoon's actions. We're in Battery Park, and I'm talking with an activist, an occupier, that I recognize from, I live in the West Village, and I saw him with five other people stop the digging of the Spectre Pipeline uh, last week. So hello, who am I talking to? Um, I'm Edward T. Hall III, or Teddy. Hi, Teddy. Hello. Uh, one of the things that never gets talked about, uh, at least I'm not aware of, is the gender politics in Occupy. We know that there's a women's caucus, there's a queer caucus, and there's a people of color caucus. But in reality, in the, in the GAs, etc., how does that gender politics work? Predominantly in the, this whole year, there's been a very male-dominated voice in this movement, um, and not enough listening. And that's just my general take. Um, not getting into any jargon, just I think there's been a lack of listening and now the learning's coming through. Um, so we're figuring out how to how to respectfully balance the input of, of, of our, our male tendencies and our fe feminine tendencies. And how do you see Occupy as a movement bringing that balance into practice? Yourself, just if you can talk about how you do it. Um, I, I have to say that the, the developments in the last year with some, some of my co-organizers here um, has, to me, been the, the, the strongest light within that. And that, that's in the constructive phase of the movement called Reclaim, where Occupy is like the roots that go down into the wall and break it up. Um, and Reclaim is like the plant that, that transcends and makes a new system. We're starting to finally figure out that it's, it's hard to disrupt injustice and build justice with the same hands and the same tools. And uh, the, um, where, where there's a group of people that come together that really want to just build and nurture, there's, there's more balance. It's less a, uh, there's less of a fight because we all agree on principles of unity. Um, not just solidarity, but we are one with those who are doing actions um, to stop injustice. So they, they, the, that in a way, like Reclaim is much more feminine than Occupy um, in terms of the, its inspiration and energy and purpose. So this is, I find that this is really, really where we can slow down and listen and encourage and nurture each other and not tear each other down and say who's right or who's wrong. Um, because that's the mode that we're in when we're trying to stop things that are wrong. Is no, like uh, NYPD, this is wrong to hurt people. And no, Spectre, this is wrong for you to, to pump. But when it comes, there's no, um, there's no Republican or Democrat or ma masculine or feminine way to build like a house or to cultivate a garden. It's much more communal, and it requires everybody to work together. One of the things I think that confuses people, particularly our male friends, is the use of the word feminine. Uh, and could you perhaps talk about what finding the feminine within yourself actually means as opposed to some kind of joke idea of what yeah. it means? Well, my notions of the ba when it comes to balancing masculine and and feminine energies, or I guess ways of being, um, was informed by my the mentorship of the Koji or the Kogi in Colombia. They're the last surviving pre-Columbian civilization, and they are really very uh, true about about how simple it is. Like life requires the masculine and the feminine in order to continue. Um, that. The, the feminine has like the nurturing space 
the listening, that the, the masculine kind of energy or the, uh, can, can be either protecting or penetrating, which, I mean, that's, the thing is that it's become, there's a lack of, of conversation that really makes it so it's very, we have a very confused society with respect to like, what does it mean to be feminine? We have masculine and feminine within us as well as outside of us, and those play themselves out. For me, like a, a feminine, a feminine mode of, of being is one that is receptive um, and something that is nurturing. And um, for the, the, uh, some, like neurologically, like my background is in also like evolutionary neuroscience and social psychology. Um, so that's kind of the oxytocin, like hugging and bonding. Um, and kind of the male energies are, are more around like the testosterone, um, like protection and punishment, um, as, as well as like kind of hierarchy. Um, and those work together. They complement each other. They're not at odds with each other. But when one is trying to dominate the other, everything's weak. And but it's not exclusively feminine belongs to women. Yeah, and masculine what, belongs to men. It's a balance. I've internally. seen some some masculine energy, uh, like at Scepter with the women's leadership coming forward. Um, and I don't mean that in a negative sense at all. It's nurtured. And, but, it's, but it also takes the leadership. Can you talk a little bit about how you experience that, if you experience that? Um, well, I find that, that feminine leadership is much more cooperative and a lot less competitive than, than male leadership. And then there's a it vast, vast interplay between the two. Um, and part of something that's, that's um, empowered women don't necessarily need to be aggressive. Um, and and in a way um, that will play out in a str in a strange way through the jousting of the few men that are trying to voice what the community is saying. Because in a weird way, words are probably some of the most penetrating. Like th they require f moving matter into space. Into into and when a male speaks, they might not even be speaking for themselves. So. Um, there's an imbalance in terms of just the, the primacy of the voice. Um, and then, so I'm, I'm kind of losing the track of this, but th what I'm trying to get at is that there's no reason to react to masculinity with masculinity. So the best way to for Occupy and Reclaim the movement, like the movement that has no name, that is that has tactics, um, for for that as well as society to just continue is for us to give less energy to the masculine. It, the only way that, that there's going to be balance is if the feminine is empowering itself um, and that's in empowering the feminine virtues. Um, Isn't some of the, uh, the structure that evolved with Occupy the, the consensus rather than up and down kind of votes isn't that a step in the right direction for men in particular to discover a different way of participation? I, I certainly believe that that model has uh, given people an experience of community again. Um, I tend to look towards the, 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 native, the native cultures in, of America for guidance, and it's usually the elder women keeping the communities like male leader from going too far from being a mirror for the whole collective's consensus. So it's all participatory, but in a way, there, for our minds to make sense of a situation, um, there's a bottleneck, and that bottleneck is the single, the single brain, like the single person being able to voice what's actually happening. In the movie Avatar, Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be very feminist-centric underneath of all the technology. Do you agree? The Oracle was female. Yeah, I, definitely. I mean, the, the source of life, in a way, like, in, for me, in, in the Baha'i faith, like, the, our founders, like, saw a feminine, um, a feminine image of God. Um, my experience with life is that there's, there's, 
that there's a we're going into a phase of a much more nurturing like kind of recognition of the way that the universe operates and Avatar is a pretty premonition film I'd find like that there's a, a refocusing on like to me that the technology itself really looked out of whack compared to the power of nature um, as well as of of the of those women in that film, um, and the men got all of their power from the women and from nature, and that is this 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 the the, the prevailing illusion of this age. Which the more we ignore it and build the future with a balanced frame, um, uh, it reflects that that whole kind of technological piercing um, and control. That is just kind of the, the that 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 male energy, way way too out of whack, and and uh, with respect to the the power of the feminine virtues. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like saying this over and over. When again, you were at the Spectra Pipeline site, and three women jumped into the the ditch that was being dug to put the pipeline in. What, did you intend, did you go there intending to do civil disobedience? And if not, what happened? Well, I had, I've been arrested about six or seven times in the movement, so I was not intending to do any dis civil disobedience. And I wanted to. And these, want, like, incredible, incredible guardians of life, these women, gracefully overcame all of these barriers and and it was the most beautiful one of the most beautiful memories I'll ever have in my life just to see them and I just wanted to be there on the sidelines just being like this like practically like I'm really emotional about what they had done um, and they they beckoned me to and a couple other people to or one other one other fellow to join in and um, and it was an honor to be able to sit with those women, and I hope that I didn't speak too much when I was sitting there. The uh, last two questions. First, I want to reclaim the word dude, because I don't think men just have to be dude. But dude to dude, what would you say to, to the men in Occupy and the men outside of Occupy about how they does the change start within, or does it start outside? It's an interplay. The humans are the... <laughs> we have an effect on our environment. <laughs> so, it's... There's a... there's a, It's an emergence. So, it's both. If, if you want to see a change in yourself, to have a change in the balance of our energy, like, a, uh, in the balance of... Do we feel a little bit too masculine, or do we feel a little bit too feminine? Um, to be able to sit and watch them and respect them for the power that they have, and know that when they're in balance, that's when we're complete. Um, and then to see that externally. I'd say for men, it's really, really important for us to look in. Um, I, that, there's, there's way too much emphasis on our external world objectifying things outside of us. And the more that we feel inside our bodies, like just feel the inside of your body and the space inside your body. Like there's just as vast of a universe inside as there is outside. Um, that is an important part to, for the, to that balancing. And as that happens, then more, there'll be more peace as well as stability within the outside world. So like you might want to be around women more and actually speak to them as opposed to look at them. And the other thing I would say is really to look at a TED talk called, uh, if you look up the man box, there's a really serious oppression of men today. And it, and it has to do with these cultural standards of what masculinity means. And men, we're physically men, but for us to be whole, we need a balance of our masculine and feminine. We have been forced to be a hyper masculine thing that's really weak. It's really weak in a, on, in a deep level. And um, it hurts men. Exactly. It hurts men. It hurts I've us. I've noticed deep. some radical fairies uh, weaving through in their sort of uh, 
costuming, uh, their uh, non-traditional male garb, so to speak. Um, do you feel brotherhood with, with the radical fairies? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, I was, um, my mother and father had, um, I was mostly raised, like, in it constantly with adults. And my godfather and his partner were, were both um, queer men that were, you'd be surprised, some of the most um, strong men in the world are, are not necessarily straight. Um, and the more that we start to let go of these boxed notions of what our gender roles are and start feeling what it is that is right for us, um, and, and having comfort within that, then, then the more truly empowered we are as well as our women. Um, so I find, I, I think that there, there's so much more for us to be able to explore in voicing what it means to be a man in the 21st century. And also about partnership. Yeah. Uh, now, now, I know if I don't ask you this question, people are going to call me up and say, why don't you ask them, what is Reclaim? Oh, it's sure, the first sure. time I've heard of Reclaim, so could you tell me, please? Yeah, um, on the 4th of July, Reclaim was born over in Foley Square, or, or it broke ground. Um, That's with, not easy in Foley Square. No, it isn't. <laughs> we, it was, uh, we were the only, the only demonstration on the 4th of July, and then uh, we had the elders... Um, of the Taino tribe, like all the way from Central America happened to be there. I was there, um, Queen Mother was there as represent the representative of the indigenous at, a, at the international scale as well as the African this diasporas the of the UN world. Meeting? This was us just yeah. being in public. Um, and we had a ceremony where the first tribes of Manhattan met around the original pond. Uh, this is a bit involved, but there's that story involved us healing those tribes. My family was uh, um, I, a number of Mayflowers and then uh, a few, like 20 or so, like declaration signers. So there was like a real convergence of the, of, of the, the blood in this soil. Um, Any native coming. blood in your family? My, um, I think there is. And besides the fact that my, my half-sister is a quarter Laguna and a quarter Hopi, um, I spent a lot of my time in New Mexico where I grew up um, on the reservation. So like... There's all these like ridiculous labels for the tribes. Um, so let's go back to Reclaim. Yes. Um, what exactly is Reclaim? Yeah. And if somebody wanted to, felt attracted to Reclaim, sure. what do they do? Here. Um, so here you go. This is, these are one of a hundred. They're printed out today because Reclaim is about the 100% unifying for those of us who have been in the trenches, the 99%, to break up Wall Street. So Occupy is like the roots breaking up the wall for us to have room to build the new systems that will reclaim the entire earth. Um, and these are popping up everywhere. Basically like alternative economies, um, alternative currencies, alternative like participatory, um, uh, what are, these are uh, like budgeting, like in city and municipal planning. So Reclaim um, is, is creating an alternative vision of cooperation Not just and a society. vision, like li there's a vision, but it's mostly about learning through doing. Um, learning and, and through doing, so actually putting yeah. theory into practice. Yeah, I'm a, I farm upstate over in Wasaic. Um, there's several thousand acres of farmland that I've been coordinating and, and, and creating this alternative system. Is that system. in land? Um, there's some people who are really in the center of that, and um, there's a couple of people, Mary Ellen Pursuit, who is over in Pennsylvania, is really, like, she's been, she knows everybody in, in Pennsylvania, and uh, even some of the hardcore fighters in New York. We have this, I think her name's Catherine, I just, like, got connected up with her. She has 9-11 first responders up in, like, literally the front lines of, like, the middle of New York, um, where the spectra, um, basically, basically where the, the hydrofracking center I went on a, a bus trip that, that uh, State Senator Espiat took uh, about two weeks ago, we went to Gasland Territory, and there was this incredible woman, and maybe the same woman you're talking mm -hmm. about, who did the tour for us, and we mm -hmm. met, we went and saw the rich people's land, because the people that had the most land were the rich people in the neighborhood, and they all had these pumps and fracking on it, and then we saw the, the 
other people who lived there whose wells had been destroyed. And it really brought home in a very personal way what fracking is about, because it's a complicated issue, but the people's land was poisoned, and, and the vegetation was poisoned. I mean, this is like thousands of so years So if someone of wants to know more about Reclaim, is yeah. there a website, or what do they do? You gotta reclaimourearth.net. You're the first person to be given this on, a, on any kind of web thing. Mm -hmm. um, we were trying to do it all personally, but since this is just happening, we'll reclaimourearth.net. And we want, uh, before now, until Columbus Day, is our mobilization of the people who agree with the principles. The principles being that we are one, recognizing our unity as global citizens, that we are overcoming separation and division of all kinds, race, gender, class, um, sharing our wisdom and traditions, like actively in our technology as well as reclaiming our divine human right to make the future we build. And from Columbus Day all the way to Thanksgiving is basically training and solidifying all of these things that we've implemented here in the, at the UN. The UN has our documents, the Open Source Imperative, Melanie and then uh, someone else, and Ale, Alexander was one of the people who brought this message with the People's Petition to the United Nations. We have the Community Bill of you Rights, which is being shared gonna, all over. Rather than talk, 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 yes, there you uh, go. Nice. people do now have a way to, to, to learn more. Yeah, sorry. And we've talked a lot because I wanted to ask man to man about some of these questions. Yeah. But, but sunning herself here is another person from the claim. And um, you sort of heard what we've been talking about. And is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, Two guys talking about masculinity and femininity? Well, I think he said it all pretty well, but I do want to add that I've seen Occupy in a few different countries, and the gender issue of participation in Occupy is everywhere. You can see exactly what Ted was describing happening in every Occupy, everywhere. So, and you think that it's changing? Uh, hopefully now. Hopefully now it is. Now that we're learning, like Ted was talking about. <laughs> I have a hard time at some of the GA meetings I've been to recently. Um, there's some strong women there, but the, the guys, <laughs> the guys. <laughs> um, and I mean, that, that's reflective of our society, you know. Yes. Occupy reflects all the contradictions of the society with the desire to make change. So I'm hopeful, but um, Reclaim sounds very interesting. Thank you. <laughs>